What, what, what the hell are you worried about? I mean, I mean, you're not a Democrat anymore, but I, I am. And as a guy who loves Joe Biden, that's fine. He, he'll steamroll any potential Look, Paul, Democrat I, I and was then go on and beat Trump. That was ex-Clinton strategist Paul Begala, mainstay over at CNN, reaffirming his faith that Joe Biden will surely win the 2024 election if he plans to run for re-election. Now, in case you missed it, here's what he said. So bring it on. What the hell are you worried about? You're not a Democrat anymore. He's speaking to Andrew Yang there who just started a new party. You're not a Democrat anymore, but I am. And as a guy who loves Joe Biden, that's fine. He'll steamroll any potential Democrat and then go on and beat Trump. Now, obviously what they're talking about here is whether or not Joe Biden should run for reelection in 2024 and Paul Begala's statement is questionable at best, especially if you look at the polling. Here's some polling data showing just how dangerously close he is to Donald Trump if he really does go head to head with Donald Trump in a general election. You know, Some of the polls show Biden up by four points, others show Trump up by three points or you know. It's tied. It's yeah, it's I mean, when you consider the margin of error, it's uncomfortable to say the least. But nonetheless, before we get to Begala's underlying faith in Biden, let's also look at some context, okay? So again, the conversation was sparked by you know, 2020 Democratic presidential candidate Andrew Yang, who suggested, hey, Biden's getting up there in age, maybe he shouldn't run for reelection. Yang suggested that Biden may face a primary challenge from someone you know, who's not part of the establishment, a Democrat who's anti-establishment, someone like Nina Turner. Damn. And that's when things got heated, let's watch. The fact is no incumbent president who's had a significant primary challenge has won re-election, right. everyone knows that. So Why every Joe establishment Democrat will say, look, and they'll be leaning on, they'll say cannot run against Joe. So you know who might run if they actually have an open process? People are already outside of the establishment. Someone like Nina Turner, someone like Marianne Williamson. And mm-hmm. if you have a a just a Nina Turner versus Joe Biden. Nina Turner ends up gathering a significant amount of support just ideologically. And the last thing the DNC is gonna want is for Joe Biden to have to debate Nina Turner six times. So they'll, they'll shut that thing down. I mean, that final point that Yang made, I think is indisputable. The idea that the establishment Democratic Party or the DNC would allow for a situation in which Nina Turner gets to debate Joe Biden is just, That would never happen. They would never allow that to happen. I think he's right about that. Now, that probably didn't sit quite well with Paul Begala, so he's about to rage. But before he does, let me just note, you wanna stick around for Jenks' reaction because once I'm done presenting this story, I probably won't even get a word in edgewise. (laughs) He's probably gonna rip Paul Begala himself. But nonetheless, let's go to the next clip. She was Barney's co-chair. She's a former state senator from Ohio, we all know know Bernie won nine. Count them nine, you were there, Andrew, nine contests, Joe won 44. And I think Bernie maybe has more support than Nina. So bring it on, what what, what the hell are you worried about? I mean, mean, you're not a Democrat anymore, but I I am. And as a guy who loves Joe Biden, that's fine. He'll steamroll any potential Democrat and then go on and beat Trump. Now, at that point, Yang brought up Biden's debate performances from the last cycle and uh, Begala, cooked up excuses for his poor performance in those debates. So let's take a look at that clip. The fact is Joe Biden performed worse in the early states where voters saw a lot of him. And that's just a fact. Iowa, New Hampshire. Why is that? Look, I spoke before or after Joe Biden half a dozen times. And the fact is when he came off that stage, you know what people were not saying? That guy has the energy, the vigor, the the, like the- And then all of a sudden he developed it. You're missing the most important thing, Andrew. The early states are full of white liberals. They don't like Joe. Then when we moved to real Democrats, African Americans in the South, they loved him and he steamrolled everybody. Because in my party, the heart and soul of the party are people of color, not pain in the ass white liberals on Twitter. Okay, just real quick, I'm gonna partly agree with one tiny part of what Paul Begala said, which is, yeah, white liberal Twitter is not representative of the Democratic electorate, and I think that there's a mistake made when the really loud individuals on Twitter are taken to be the representatives of a larger group of individuals. With that said though, I love when 
Democratic strategists, people like Paul Begala bring up the black vote or the Latino vote. People of color who, yes, have loyally voted for the Democratic Party in election cycle after election cycle and have then been neglected by the Democratic Party after the fact. I don't know how much longer Democrats can get away with doing that. I specifically remember the rage black voters in states like Georgia were feeling toward the Democratic Party after they failed to do something basic, something they campaigned on, which is to pass a voting rights bill. So again, we're seeing the Latino vote in particular start to shift slowly but surely to the Republican Party. Democrats should be alarmed by that. I don't feel like they're alarmed by that. I don't think Paul Begala is even really fully aware of that. But with that said, Cenk, take it away. So before I rip into Begala, uh, yeah, I appreciate that on CNN they're talking about how Nina Turner could be president. Uh, well, in the meanwhile, she's starting a show right here on Monday. Okay, so go to youtube.com slash onbosstyt. She's gonna be part of the TYT network uh, every day at four o'clock Eastern, Nina Turner. Uh, her new show on Boss with Nina Turner. Check it out. Subscribe right now, and we'll put the link below. YouTube.com/slash/onboss.tyt. Okay, so thank you for the plug, Andrew Yang, randomly on CNN. Uh, so uh, now to Begala. Uh, look, guys, I used to be angrier about this because this is uh, mainstream media brainwashing, and it works uh, exceedingly well. And in fact, that's why they won 2016, and that's definitely why they won 2020. Uh, and that's the part that Begala uh, leaves out. I'm a little less angry about it these days because. Uh, the power of mainstream media every year gets smaller and smaller and smaller. They're still relatively in charge, why? Because unfortunately, a lot of Democratic primary voters are older and they watch television. And when they watch television, they get nothing but corporate propaganda and propaganda on behalf of corporate Democrats from people like Paul Begala. And so CNN will bring him on endlessly to tell you pretty little lies about, oh my God, Biden's Got this man. Now, first of all, what did Paul McGall tell you about the 2016 election? Hillary Clinton's definitely going to beat Trump. Oops. Did they ever have Paul Begala on CNN back after the election and to apologize and say, "Oh, I'm sorry. It turns out I'm a moron." It turns out Donald Trump, who's barely in the in the double digits in IQ, beat the legendary Hillary Clinton, who I told you was definitely going to win, and that you should definitely vote against Bernie because Bernie couldn't beat Trump. So Begala is a proven loser. He doesn't know anything. Then Biden, they, how did he win? Begala says, oh, all of a sudden, because of the energy that he picked up. At, what energy are you talking about? He won 44 and, 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 and Bernie only won nine. Look at how misleading all of this is. Bernie won the first three. Why? Because it was only white people voting? No, that's an excuse and propaganda that Begala is doing. Remember, black people, we didn't deliver anything for you. We told you the bare minimum was voting rights, and then we pulled the rug out. Nikki didn't even give you voting rights. But I'm telling you, uh, yeah, black people like Joe Biden. Black people love corporate Democrats who love corruption. That's what black people love. Oh, thank you for speaking for black people, Paul Begala. He's like, the white liberals, nobody cares about them. Dude, you're the white liberal. You're the white liberal, okay? I mean, look at the propaganda that they do so brazenly out in the open. <laughs> it's amazing. So what actually happened? It was the famous Obama panic. Bernie wins the first three primaries. Biden gets humiliated, finishes fifth and fourth in the first two, mm -hmm. right? And then the corporate Democrats panic. Clyburn and Obama step in and go, everybody, Buttigieg, Klobuchar, all of you, get on your knees. It's gonna be Biden, right? And then all of them go, yes, yeah, sir, absolutely, sir. Biden, Biden, we all endorse Biden, we're out of here. Biden, Biden, Biden. They all dropped out, all endorsed all Biden. Them, all yeah. of them, right? And then what did MSNBC and CNN do? They just, oh, Biden, it's Biden, it's Biden, it's definitely not Bernie. And then they had Chris Matthews come out and say, you know, if guys like Bernie had won, you know, we'd all be executed in Central Park. <laughs> you wanna get executed, you wanna get murdered? Older Democratic voters, you'll get murdered if it's Bernie, right? Then they had Chuck Todd come out and go, well, you know, brown shirt supporters of Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders' family was killed in the Holocaust. And he called Bernie Sanders followers. Brown shirts, because they panicked. Corporate media and corporate Democrats panicked. They're like, it can't be Bernie. He actually would represent the people and not our beloved corporations. And that's exactly what Paul Begala is. He's just a sad, sad toady for corporate America. And what do you think he does after CNN? He goes to the corporations he represents, he goes, <laughs> I did my job. Can I get my money? I want my money. 
Okay, that's who Paul Begales. It turns out yeah. I am actually angry. No, I was going to say, I mean, the good news is he doesn't get you angry anymore. Right? Yeah, no, no. I said he doesn't get me as angry, and before I would have been more angry. Okay. No, I, mm, you look pretty angry. No. <laughs> so, no, because guys like Paul Begala have been lying to you your whole life. So finally, we get back to, well, guys, we have to beat Trump, right? And we have to beat the Republicans, because if Trump was the presidency, democracy might literally end, right? Now they will then on cable news. You will hear that 24/7. You heard it in 2020, but you will hear it 10 times more in 2024. And they will complete that sentence with, "That's why you have to elect Joe Biden." But wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, Biden beat Trump. That's fair, right? And by the way, the popular vote, he did great. He got seven million more votes. See, unlike the goddamn liars like Paul Begala, you're right. I am still angry. Okay, we tell you the truth. Yeah, he won the popular vote by a lot, right? He won the Electoral College, which is the only thing that matters, unfortunately, by only 43,000 votes in three swing states. They lost to him once, and they almost lost to him a second time because they suck at this. Okay. They go and they go, oh, yeah, corporations are awesome. Nothing will change. Nothing will change. You will like the status quo. You'll suck on the status well, quo. Okay. okay? And then, and then they, they almost lose to goddamn Trump. They'll do it again. Begala will sink this country. Him and his stupid corporate buddies, you are totally right. I'm just as angry as ever. Okay. His stupid, stinking corporate buddies will hand the country over to the fascists. What was missing from that conversation, and I think that it's definitely relevant in the context of that discussion, is to bring up how there was a pretty dire moment in the Biden administration when his approval ratings were just abysmal, terrible. Yeah, they fell below and Trump's. Yes, That's record breaking. Yes, ranking. exactly. Okay. But he's doing better now. And he's doing better because of what? Because of this alter ego that, you know, he's actually seeming to lean into, which is the dark Brandon stuff. Actually forgiving a modest portion of student loan debt. Actually pushing for policies that help make Americans a little more economically stable, right? I wish they leaned into that discussion a little more because all they're talking about here is personality, right? Like, oh yeah, Biden's gonna cry. But like, do you not understand that Americans just, it's the economy stupid, right? Americans care about whether or not their personal lives have improved under the leadership of this particular president. And he has been doing better in the polls as a result of the policies that he has succeeded in accomplishing. Progressive policies. The progressive policies, exactly. But I mean, that conversation isn't being had on CNN. Because God forbid they promote the progressive policies that voters across the aisle actually do support. 100%. And finally, Andrew Yang is so right. So there's two issues that a progressive faces in order to mount a challenge to, uh, to Joe Biden so that we can actually win the presidency in 2024. Number, the second one is, well, how do you beat him against the wall of propaganda and it's and and all the things that corporate media will do, etc. Okay, and that's and Bernie lost in that scenario. He couldn't beat all the corporate propaganda. Okay, but that's not the main issue. The number one issue is will the corporate Democrats in the form of the DNC and the corporate media like CNN and MSNBC even allow a challenge to Biden? And my guess is they won't. So if Nina Turner or anyone else runs, and God, I hope that there's a strong progressive who makes a case against Biden and runs, I guarantee you they're the, the, the Two giant problems is the NC people are like, there are debates, we don't need debates. There are debates. No, we're gonna let us somebody smart and aggressive and tough. And there's somebody who wants to fight Republicans against Joe Biden. No way. No way. Six debates, there's zero percent chance of that happening. And then they'll be like, rigged? I don't know what you mean by rigged. It's not rigged at all. Okay, and corporate media will say, not legitimate, not credible, not credible, no chance of winning. No way, no way. Don't you dare thinking about somebody Voting for someone who would actually help you. So I'm sick of all of their corruption. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that. All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.